Let's take a look at WebAssign UGO3. Our first problem talked about astronomical observ observations of our Milky Way indicate approximately 8 times 10 to the 11th solar masses. A star orbiting near the galaxy is 6, or I guess 60,000 uh, light years from the center. Uh, so the question is what should the orbital period be in years? What that means is we got to do quite a bit of conversions here. First one for mass. Uh, to start with, one solar mass is 2e30, and that's the mass of the sun. We'll multiply by 8e11 to account for how many solar masses there are. So 2e30 by 8e11. That gives us 1.6e42 kilograms. Now as for the distance, r we got to convert the 60,000 light years into seconds uh, before we go ahead and find the time. So we'll start by saying this, uh, a light year, so that's 3E8 meters in one second. There's 86,400 seconds in one day. There are 365 days in one year. And this is for 60,000 years. So 3E8 times 86,400 times 365 times 60,000. Gives us an orbital radius of 5.68E20 meters. Now it becomes a pretty nasty plug and chug. Uh, I say nasty because a lot of scientific notation that you're going to have to deal with your ultimate goal is to find t. So we'll put 6.67e negative 11 in for g. The mass is 1.6e42. Uh, whoops, don't forget t squared. 4 pi squared. Then r is 5.68e20. Make sure you cube r. So now I'll start with that 5.68e20. Cube it, multiply by 4 pi squared. Then I'll divide out a 6.67e negative 11. Then I'll divide out a 1.6e42. Finally, taking the square root, I get a period of 8.23e15 seconds. It would like the answer in years. So in order to convert it, I'm going to divide it by 86,400, then figure out how many days, and then divide it by 365, and figure out how many years. My answer is 261 E, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 years. So, uh, 268 million years, which seems a reasonable amount of time to orbit uh, a galaxy. Now, it says uh, instead it actually only takes 58 million years. Uh, so, what is the mass of the galaxy? And we talked about, well, this is the evidence of why there's dark matter because the stars are moving way too fast. Uh, so what we're going to do instead is we're going to run the GMT squared equals 4 pi r cubed equation. G still stays 6.67 e negative 11. We're now solving for mass. And then our goal is to figure out um, what the mass is and then convert it to solar masses. I'm going to take the 5.8 e7 years and I'll multiply it by 365. So that tells me how many days. Multiply it again by 86,400. That tells me how many seconds. I get 1.83 e15 seconds. Don't forget to square it. That will equal 4 pi squared r cubed. r still stays 5.68 e20. Again, make sure you put the cube on it. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and do 4 times pi squared times 5.68 e20 cubed. I'll divide it by 6.67 e negative 11. And then divided by 1.83e15 squared. And I find the mass turns out to be 3.24e43 kilograms. Now the final step to figure out how many solar masses, I'm going to divide that by 2e30. Because the mass of the sun is 2e30. I end up with 1.62e13 solar masses. And that kind of concludes one. Like I said, plug and chug, but really annoying because of conversions.
moving on to two. Uh, two, much faster one. A new planet is discovered with a given mass and radius. Uh, so first thing, draw your attention. This is kilometers. So that's 7.5 E3 kilometers. So we're going to do 7.5 E6 meters. The escape velocity equation was derived last class. You can reference the notes if you need to, but it is the square root of 2gm over r. So we'll run 2 times 6.67 e negative 11 divided by the mass of the planet, which is 7.12 e24, dividing it by 7.5 e6, and all of that is under a square root. Calculator time. I successfully got 11,253 meters per second. Moving on to question three, third and final question for this web assign. New planets discovered, you're given the mass and the radius. Uh, once again, I'm going to immediately convert this radius, 7.70 E6 meters. An altitude, uh, so that's 5.10 E uh, this will be E2 kilometers, so it's E5 meters. Now, uh, what I'm looking at is, here's my planet. Not the best circle, but good enough. And here's my orbital path. This is the radius of the planet. This is the altitude. The result, R, R would be this number plus this number. So that's going to come out to 8.21 E6 meters. So that will be the radius that I'll be using as I solve this. Uh, the first question asks, what's the velocity of the satellite in the orbit? Uh, as we had derived the orbital equation, I had gone ahead and gotten to this point here, square root of gm over r. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can just do 2 pi r over t, assuming you know the period, uh, which in this case you don't. Uh, but you can find the period, which you're going to be asked to do in Part B. So you can actually solve Part B first and then go back. Uh, let's just stick with the square root gm over r. So that will be the root of 6.67 e negative 11 times a mass of 5.34 e24. We'll divide that entire thing by 8.21 e6. So 6.67, punch it into the calculator time. Uh, per usual, lots of scientific notation kind of makes it annoying. The velocity is 6,587 meters per second. Now that's the orbital velocity, not the escape velocity. Don't confuse that with question two. All right, part B. GMT squared equals 4 pi squared R cubed. So G, 6.67, E negative 11. The mass, 5.34, E24. You're solving for T. 4 pi squared. R is 8.21, E6. Don't forget to cube it. So 4 times pi squared times 8.21 e6 cubed. Divide that by g, which is 6.67 e negative 11. Divided by the mass, 5.34 e24. Don't forget to take the square root. Uh, doing so yields 7,831 seconds. So we'll take that 7,831 and we'll divide it by 60. And I get approximately 131 minutes is my answer for b. Moving on, it says C wants to know what's the kinetic energy of the satellite. Let's remind ourselves the satellite has a mass of 2520. So the kinetic energy of the satellite is 1 half mv squared. So 1 half 2520 as a mass. V, 6587, that's what we solved in part A. 1 half by 2520 times 6587 squared. Uh, the result is you get 5.47 E10 joules. That's your kinetic energy. Your potential energy, negative GMM over R. 
So that'll be a negative 6.67 e negative 11. Mass of the planet, that was 5.34 e 24. Mass of the satellite, 2520. Orbital radius, uh, 8.21 e6. Going back to the calculator, again, rather mm, annoying with such very big numbers, but manageable nonetheless. 1.09 e11 joules. I'm sorry, that should be a negative, a negative 1.09. Final question is, well, what's the total energy? Total energy is the kinetic plus the potential. So 5.47 E10 minus 1.09 E11. And let's see what we get, 1.09 E11. I got a negative 5.43 E10 joules the total energy. Let's see how this actually matches up with the Weber sign. Coming back to question one, uh, 2.61 E8 years, 2.61 E8, masses 1.62 E13, or B, uh, question two rather, 11,253, 11,253. Uh, question three, part A, 6587 minutes, 131 kinetic energy, 5.47 E10, potential energy, negative uh, 1.09 E11, and total energy, negative 5.43 E10. Right. And perfect, 8 out of 8. Hopefully you did the same.